Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're rolling. Okay, Rod. We're going to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind contemplative life. And of course, meditation is, is definitely a type of contemplation, isn't it? Um, a silence, uh, observing thoughts rather than being lost in them. So how did you find your way into the contemplative life? Well, I guess, um, I think like a lot of people, I got into this life actually through crisis. You know, I, there was a, a crisis that I had that um, required a new way of thinking to solve. And so uh, I became really not even, you know, in some ways it was kind of like against my, my will in a sense, you know, but I, I became open to you know, other ways of thinking about mm -hmm. um, life, you know, and, um, you know, broadened the perspective a bit. And so that was how I got through. And, and I think that is, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people say that too, that a crisis is what brings them into the contemplative life. Yeah. Some, some tragedy or some, you know, a terrible thing or whatever. So, yeah. And I do. And as, as the years have gone by, um, I guess I'm just a weird person that I find the topic that we're going to talk about very, very interesting, you know, even from a purely intellectual perspective, you know, never mind looking at it from a spiritual perspective. But I think that, you know, the perspective we're going to be, you know, kind of ex ex exploring today um, is quite intellectually stimulating actually in a lot of ways and so um i just find it to be endlessly fascinating actually so it's, it's something i love talking about <laughs> um okay so yeah you've used the word perspective what what is what is this uh, philosophical perspective well you speak of yeah so last week we were talking about meditation right mm -hmm. and, um you were talking about the practice of it and how you practice and uh, the practical aspect of it. And, <clears throat> you know, for, for a long, long time, meditation was also associated with, um, with a certain view, right? A certain understanding that the, mm -hmm. the Buddha taught the right view, right? In his, in his noble eightfold path. And so the view becomes really, really important for, for people, who, you know, if you're, you know, you know, to like keep moving forward. Um, now, as you know, we, we were talking about before, um, there's really two kinds of practitioners, right? There are people who, who practice um, exclusively for the practical benefits of like being calm and being more present and being more aware. And then- And to get, to get to know the mind, as I said last week. Yeah, and to get to know the mind. Mm -hmm. And I would put but myself even, in that. Mm -hmm. I would put myself in that uh, group. Okay, absolutely. So that, to me, actually indicates a certain curiosity. Then it's not mm -hmm. just I want to be calmer, but you're you're trying. But there is a certain I want to get to know something. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the mind is something that you know. Uh, this perspective takes a very clear view on, actually. So, okay. Um, you know, we'll. We'll get into all that. So um, a couple of things I just want to say is that w what I'm going to be talking about um, is not my own thing. <laughs> like I didn't come up with this at all. Okay, this is, this right. is thousands and thousands of, of years old. And um, from, 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 the, from the Upanishads, which I believe is the oldest, I think these are the oldest religious texts that we have actually. And so, so we can't we can't start a new movement with you as the leader. Then is that what you're saying? No, absolutely not. No, it's not I, your thing. Okay, that's oh, a no, pity. No way. I, <laughs> you know, I I tried to run a group about this for about a month, and I was like, I I just had to end it. I was like, I, I can't do that. You know, like this is not my role in this life at all. <laughs> you know, like, it, was, it was really not for, for, for me, but. <clears throat> 
as somebody who's just interested in it, who, who has no real vested interest whatsoever in, in how others feel about it, actually, you know, I do think that it's, it's of enormous benefit, actually, to, you know, to, you know, to, to consider these things. And, and there are very popular people talking about these things, too, like, like Jordan Peterson talks about, you know, consciousness and, and that kind of thing. So it's not totally, completely out of the blue these days anymore. But it certainly used to, it certainly used to, used to be though in the past where you know if you if you were taking on this perspective you know you were very much of an outlier whereas I think now more and more people are really coming around to this you know including scientists so the the first thing to say about it um, this, per, this 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 perspective is um, and you can goal. use the word philosophy as well as perspective. Mm hmm. The reason I prefer a perspective as a word, I mean, yes, you mm -hmm. can. But the reason I prefer perspective is because it, it's, it isn't laden with any idea. Mm -hmm. right? Like, like mm -hmm. a perspective is just seeing, just experiencing. Right. And so and there's not this is a very lean thing we're talking about in terms of content. You know, there's not a lot to say about what we're going to talk about. Like it's it's a very finite amount of details and mm -hmm. um, on purpose because it's, it's about how to see rather than how to think, you see, it, it's really about, you know, so. My so it's still very practical, you, you would say? It's what? It's very practical. It's something that you can experience totally is what we're oh talking God, about. It's not, yeah. it's not ideas. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's practical. so practical. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, the Indians had no patience for, you know, impractical viewpoints on these things, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, it, it's very lean, which, which I like about it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, you don't have to study long tracts, although the more you become interested in it, it what, what happens naturally to most people is, is they become very interested in reading more into the, the tradition. Like they, they'll start reading the scriptures actually of, yeah. all of the mystical traditions of the world you know the christian mysticism and the, and sufism of islam yeah. and the vedanta of india you know people naturally start to gravitate toward you know learning about those things because they are the deepest ex 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 expression of of what of what you know you know of what we're we're, we're talking about here which is mm -hmm. so the goal so i thought that a good way to start would be to start with the goal so what is the mm -hmm. goal of this perspective or is there a goal? And actually the mm -hmm. answer is yes, there, there is a goal. And the goal mm -hmm. of this the perspective is to see through or to cut through the, 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 the illusion of separate self. Mm -hmm. Once in separate all, not, self. Just a, not just a glimpse, but you, you actually are experiencing life as if you are not a separate self. Okay. That is the goal of Vedanta, at least it, of India. And, um, and, and I believe the same, uh, the principle, you know, applies in other traditions too, like Christianity, where it's like merging with God is, is, is the, is the mystical, you know, goal too. So this, this merging with, with the all or the one is, is really kind of a, you know, one of the, uh, the tenets, I suppose, of Vedanta or, or mysticism, or whatever you want to call it. And um, merging with the all, that's everything, every living thing, every tree, every person, well, we don't every, everything is one. We just don't know. So, you know, um, my inclination is yes, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, but I, yeah, it just means that there's no, there's no, there's no more sense of subject object, right? It's, it's the collapsing of, of subject object. And, and just it, it becomes just a field, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the field en encompasses everything, right? It, it encompasses the physical universe as well as our conscious awareness of the physical universe, right? Which is <laughs> mm. which one is which one is more important? Which one depends more on the other? When you stop and, and think about it, that that becomes a big question, actually. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So. 
one thing I love about so there's a couple of things I really like about the like about this this view that the mystical perspective is that first of all there's no centralized ideology right there there's no systemized like this is what it is right like if you read the Christian mystics or you know the the Upanishads they they are not setting forth a system <laughs> it's just little snippets here and there of extraordinary wisdom you know mm. and because it's very hard to chart what we're talking about there, there's no map you can really use or the maps that that the mystics use are usually you know so fragmentary right because it it's just so hard to chart you know where you know mm. this inner landscape that you know that that people uh start to go through as they develop higher and higher right um so the you know so i guess you could say the goal is to transcend ego right and mm -hmm. uh, you know which is the same as 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 buddhism right i mean the buddha taught this ex the same thing yeah now one of the <clears throat> now one of the tenets is that consciousness is primary in the sense that um the idea is that conscious awareness supersedes the physical universe so that so before the universe there there's awareness okay, okay. Um, now that's just something you know you can take it or leave it but and, and it's not important to like believe this or believe that okay um but one of the really interesting ways to think about that idea mm. is to think about consciousness as as not being inside the body, but the body just being inside of consciousness and mm -hmm. body being one object in consciousness only. So the, bo the body is just one object in my consciousness, like, like a pencil, you know, or anything else. Just, it's just one of a, 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 a bazillion other objects that I am aware of in my consciousness. So that's right. the, so it's not your, it's not your body. You could say, right. Right. Is, you are not yeah. the body is one of the, it's sort of catchphrases you could say right you are not the body all right and when you when you talk about consciousness are you talking you're talking about awareness is that the same word would you say no well not not in i mean those two could be collapsed i'm sure in certain ways of of thinking but if we're looking at it from like an indian perspective though like st strictly from there then no th those two things are really teased out consciousness and and awareness are are are, are separate and so could you first there's, first there's awareness and consciousness is is secondary because consciousness depends on an object whereas awareness does not you see so consciousness needs something to be conscious of in, in order for it to even flicker on in the first place okay whereas awareness can be aware only of itself you know like 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 where what i mean is awareness has the capacity to to be aware of itself so you know therefore it doesn't need it doesn't need an object and so yes i think i've heard you say this before aware to be aware of awareness right right, right. but i i never i don't really understand that concept I, yeah. I just understand the concept of being aware of this body breathing right that's yeah. that's my uh, concept of awareness and that's really what i'm trying to do uh okay. through through this practice right but you're talking about something beyond that i, I would hes i hesitate to use the word be beyond it's just it, as a matter of mere fact it just becomes you know it's like i don't think i don't think there, there, there like, like an intellectual understanding of awareness being aware of itself is really necessary. It's it's no. something more. It's it's more of a contemplative like mantra almost that you could use. You know, like if you are meditating and you ask yourself, you know, what would being aware of awareness be, or mm. what would it feel like, or what you know, then you might start to understand. You know, th then you understand it as like an experiential thing, mm. um, and that becomes and that's where like the non-dual thing comes in right because there's no subject object anymore and so um yeah you know and when you say no subject object yeah could you could you break that down is sure. it something like i am aware of my body that is that uh yeah so the subject is i yeah and, I am, and 
and the body is the object. And that's my awareness, you might say. But you're talking about it's obviously something uh, where there is no I. It's right. You, I think you've said for shared. It's a shared awareness, isn't it? Is well, talking about. or I think it could be. There's no way to prove that. So, you know, we, we got to leave stuff like that. You know, who knows? But mm -hmm. my intuition says, yes, we are all at the level of awareness where we're having the exact same ex ex basic experience of being aware. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. But, but how can we ever prove that, right? I mean, how do you prove the subjective experience of anybody, right? So... Right. I mean, for, for all we know, you know, I could be a figment of your imagination, right? And it, I'm not, right? And I, and you could be one for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, so there's no, I guess there's not a big reason to, you know, go down that path too far, you know. So are we, are we ready to get into the how? How do we uh, tap into this? What, what, what are the practical? Well, can I just say a couple more things about the mood of it? You know, because I, because I want people to get a feel of, how refreshing it actually is <laughs> you know like how like oh god yeah like it's just so nice to that um, sounds sounds lovely yeah it is you know it, it it brings real um like peace and insight and understanding as i've ex experienced it in little spurts you know i mean i get little spurts of it only because i i study it so much and and talk about it with others and you know so it's 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 something that's at the forefront of my mind often, you know? Mm. So, um, so consciousness is prime, right? We forget about that. But I, I do love that thing about your body is in consciousness. You, you, you're, we think that our consciousness is like inside of our skull. Yes. The Indian perspective turns it completely on its head, which is very, very compelling. And, um, and with, and when you contemplate on that, you know, the body just being one object in consciousness that's a good you know that's a good uh meditative thing too yeah. so not not my consciousness it's just consciousness. in consciousness yes my, the, the body is a did you say the body is an object um what was the same? body yeah the body yeah that yeah the, the body's an object in consciousness yep it just as everything yeah so it sounds like i mean I, I obviously you're going to say a few more things before we get to the practice but it sounds like already there's just some mantras or some some sentences you can repeat yeah, uh, yeah. That, that will jolt will jolt the mind you know yeah. into these states sure. yeah so it's really you don't have to understand that you don't have to believe it you right. just repeat repeat these just, just find there. out if it's, if it's true i mean Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what some of the teachers of the Vedanta say to students is like, just just find out, you know, if you don't mm. if you don't believe me, then go then go find out. You know, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. No one's yeah. no one's trying to convince anybody of anything. And that's another aspect of, of this view that's very, very important is that it's it, it's not seeking adherence. It's not trying to persuade anybody. It isn't trying to win anybody over. OK, but never. It's it's just it's just there. <laughs> but. Mm when we come to it or if, if we get a glimpse of it we it, it's like oh wow this you know this might be worth investigating and i don't mean oh wow and like oh my god it's like this earth shattering thing although for some people it can be <laughs> um for me it never has been too much i mean i've had my you know i guess like ex, you know spiritual ex, ex, experiences um which I don't put a lot of stock in anyway. You know, I don't, I don't put a lot of value in like those peak ex experiences. Um, anyway, to continue with just a couple more you know, aspects mm. of this, this is a path of study, which means, you know, so there's paths, you know, there's a path of practice, right? You know, Hatha yep. yoga, right? But this is Jnana yoga, right? Jnana yoga, which is like the path of study. So, when we're talking about this the kind of thing, you know, the the practitioners are studiers, actually. You know, we we sit and read books, you know, which I know some people are like, oh God, that's the worst thing you could do it, you know. And that that is valid perspective, you know, that <laughs> reading books um just puts more clutter in the mind, right? Um 
And that view is taken, you know, nobody who, who, who practices that way thinks that's a bad argument, right? It's, it's just that when, you know, some, some teachers have a lot of insight, right? And, and so it, it is worth just reading what they have to say, right? And, uh, sure. and so studying is a, is a big part of, of this, more so than in Buddhism, I would say. Mm -hmm. so the, okay. This is a very intellectual field, actually. It's a very intellectual field of, of study. And uh, also, in this view, there is the, a role for faith and grace, okay? Mm -hmm. And grace. Buddhism shares this, this too, but it's much less, uh, it's much less emphasized, um, the grace part. Mm -hmm. Grace meaning you can't do it all by yourself. You know, some, something bigger than you has to come in and help you out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, all you can do is, all you... You know, human effort can only get you to, to the brink, but to go beyond it, you need some kind of something large. The universe has to step in somehow and, and push you over that line. You know, you can't okay. do it on your own. And uh, a faith in something bigger is necessary. Well, grace. Well, great. I'm talking specifically about grace. And this is something that comes from without, right? This is like an yeah. external thing, perhaps, mostly, yeah. or maybe not. I mean, it could emerge as a a new idea, I suppose. But mm -hmm. grace is something that comes in into a situation that, you know, that, you know, radically helps it or transforms it, you know, it, and, uh, and it wasn't a you're doing, you know, Th that's another aspect of this we're talking about, you are not the doer. That's another catchphrase, you know, of this thing is, you are not the doer. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, mm. so and it takes a decisively it takes a decisively uh, non-free will perspective, too. I was going to say, yes. Yeah. That sounds a bit uh, like we don't have free will. Although it recognizes free will at a certain level of awareness, right? So it's really about like levels of development and stages in a life, right? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and at certain levels, there is free will. I mean, we live as if there is, so there is, right? So it, it doesn't right. even matter. But when yeah. you get to when you get to um you know when awareness becomes aware of itself it kind of thing mm. that's when you start to see that all of your behavior all of it is just mm. conditioned <laughs> i mean all of it like it's conditioned yes yeah 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 you know there's no um there's no way out of it except to become aware of it right which is mm. You know, which is what like therapy is based on. Right? It's like you become aware of this thing, and then it, it kind yes. of loses power over you a bit. Okay? So grace is an important aspect of, of this. And I know in the West these days, with the, all these fancy modern thinkers, <laughs> you know, grace is not something we're going to take. You know, but this is a a very very, in my opinion, you couldn't help yourself more than to start thinking in terms of grace and, and how it shows up in, in your life. I mean, it's, it's just in, incredible <laughs> when you start to think about it or it, it, to conceptualize your life in that way. Like, is there grace in, in my life and where does it show up? And when you start looking, you, you see it, you know, you see it in, even in really dire circumstances. <laughs> so and um, once again, grace, grace being something that is not you. And, and something outside of you. Yeah. It's not, well, it's Whatever certainly it's not your is. ego. That is for absolute certain. Okay. It is not, it, it, it is nothing that is subjected to your will. Okay. But yes, mm -hmm. it is beyond what, what your will can do. Okay. Could you use words like uh, luck and destiny? And yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, luck it has a different meaning right i mean mm. luck is just this blind thing i i think grace is more like yeah the universe is not a hostile place right that's what grace kind of says to me that you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. we're all watching and being watched after right we're, we're we're watching after each other and and we're also being watched after you know and observing and watching and awareness all of this is is the same thing right we're just watching <laughs> <laughs> the role of watching, <laughs> you know. So the way and just um, how how would you define ego? The um, the the full sense of self is that a pretty good start starting point? Which yeah. is obviously a Buddhist um, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. You know, it's just okay. 
the ego is a bundle of thoughts that gives you a certain identity, you know, it, okay. mostly yeah. repeated thoughts, I guess, right. That, mm. that give you a certain fixed sense of identity. Right? Yes. Yeah. In, in a temporal changing, you know, world. that's the whole problem with ego, right. Is that it, it's coming up against it's, it, it, it wants to be a steady, solid thing, but it keeps mm. it coming up against the temporal world and change, right? Whereas right. awareness, right, never changes. And so when attention is focused on that, you know, you're, it kind of takes you out of the fluctuations a, a little bit, right? Where you, you get a little bit of removal, I suppose, or a little bit of distance between you and, and these events happening, which which gives you more freedom you know mm, what, right. as you were saying last week like respond you know responding rather than reacting right yes yes bit of space between mm -hmm. yeah the space between the uh mm. yeah yeah um and then finally now what we've got about eight if we're going to stay within 30 minutes we've got we've got about eight minutes left okay well, there's, one, there's just one more thing that i i, I want to make very clear that's that's important about any mystical perspective, whether it be yeah. Christian or whatever, is that it is radically accepting and tolerant. Okay, I mean, I mean this, and I- I, I like the way you said radically there. It is whatever. radically accepting. It too- it's Radically accepting. That it doesn't try to convince anybody. It doesn't try to get people to convert. It doesn't mm. try to pick up followers, okay? Mm -hmm. It is 100% non-dogmatic. Mm. And even though it thinks of itself, you know, it, it does recognize itself as perhaps the highest, you know, human wisdom that we're capable of. It does not take a superior view on anything else whatsoever. So mm -hmm. if you are doing something else, it, it tells you, keep doing what you're doing. It doesn't say change and you have to get your life together. It, it tells you, keep doing what you're doing. Because the faith in this is that everybody is on the same path. Ult ultimately, we're, we're just at different points on the path. And so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter, you know, it, um, what people are doing. So it's like stay as non interfering with, with other people as as possible, which I think mm -hmm. is just a great tenet. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, interfere with other people as little as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that's it. So that so that's uh, the, and yeah. uh, on, on a practical basis, as I said, repeat some of those mantras that you said, like what would awareness of awareness be like? You could just repeat that as you're meditating, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally, um, when it comes to practice, I'm not a big chanter repeater like that. I like to chant in like a, in like a meditation hall. Like that's great. Mm -hmm. like, I love chanting Sanskrit. You know, but mm -hmm. I'm not big into like meditating and like repeating something in my mind, you know, so I, I've, I've never done, well, I've done it, but, and found it lacking for myself. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's the meaning of the words that's actually important, right? If I'm saying, it, um, awareness being aware of itself, mm. those words have meaning, right? So you want to, if you're going to. If you're going to repeat it in a sense make sure that if you repeat it you're really absorbing the meaning of the words and not just yeah chanting yeah. it like a mantra that has no meaning yes really think about what what the meaning is yeah. okay exactly. so that's exactly. one way also you said reading reading yeah. texts and yeah well, who who would you start with who's the most accessible author or book to get into God, accessibility. <laughs> See, that's where it starts getting tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Anyway, who, who would you who no, would you that, recommend? That's a great question, and and I'm really thinking about it. Honestly, I would start with with Marcus Aurelius. Honestly, that, that, okay. Yeah, really? I, I, I love his reflections. Yeah, I mean, he had this view. He understood. He says it explicitly. You know, this is because. It, Another interesting thing about what we're saying here is that this has a very strong, you know, the, what we're talking about, this philosophical outlook um, also has a very strong current in Greek, uh, in, in the Greek tradition, too. And so mm -hmm. there are 
the Neoplatonists are all about this mystical view that we're talking about, like Plotinus especially. He's the greatest. <laughs> I mean, he's a very uplifting writer to read, but it's hard. You know, he's dense and it's hard. Mm. Um, but he understood very, very well, you know, everything. Um, so the, so the, the Greeks were on onto this too, you know. And, and I know that like Marcus Aurelius was Roman, but of course he was heavily influenced by you know greek thought so um in in the marcus worldview this is more of the stoic view right the greeks right so they're yeah. they're more concerned with like the logos which is you know well roman i suppose um mm -hmm. really isn't it marcus really is roman yeah. yeah 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 that's what i mean so so he um was but he was influenced very strongly by by greek thought by the greek which was um you know the logos right was what uh you know thinking about the word as you know existence yeah. you know and so marcus aurelius i i think he's great he has good passages where he understands very clearly to take a good so how to practice he, he's very very practical in the book um he practices by just taking short little check-ins with himself, you know, like check in with your being, you know, and just be for a few minutes, you know, yeah. and throughout the day, but don't stay too long. And, and, he, and he actually says that explicitly, which I love. He, he says, um, don't stay too long there though. You don't want to meditate too long. Mm. <laughs> you got to get back in, into the world. You know, the, mm. you don't want to escape into what we're talking about in other words right yeah. and um which is another thing i didn't mention before but many teachers of this uh tradition um you know they they actually encourage people to go in, in into the world rather than you know a, a monastic thing you know like stay they say get married have a family have a career <laughs> um you can still uh you know become very, very highly spiritually aware w without dropping out of the world and without, you know, um, anything like that. And, and in fact, a, cl a close reader of the, of, the of the Upanishads would notice that um, many of the sages that are speaking are married and have children. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is very much a layman's tradition, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's an, inter an interesting thing. Um, yeah, so I think time wise rod yeah okay well good yeah we'll wrap that up we, we covered a lot right um very good did you have any more more questions about not at all i not at all i've got uh i wrote some some of the main points down so you know yeah i can go go away and uh yeah contemplate some of these ideas yeah mm -hmm. well good yeah. shall i stop the video here stop the video all right, let's stop the video. We'll, we'll stop rolling.